Welcome to Gold Derby. I'm senior editor Denton Davidson here with SAG Award and Gold Derby Award winner Kate Flannery, formerly known as Starfish on The Mass Singer. Kate, I don't know if anyone has exuded so much joy through their costume. It really looked like you were having a blast up there. I will tell you, if I got, if somebody cast a spell on me and I got stuck as Starfish, I think I'd be happy with that. I mean, Under Pressure by Queen, 21 Guns by Green Day, Material Girl by Madonna. Come on. I mean, how, how much fun was it to choose the songs and, and how much input did you have in that? I really didn't choose the songs. I mean, they, they would offer like a bunch and then, you know, I feel like the ones I was like, I'll take this one. They're like, uh, how about this? Which is fine. I, I always feel like, you know, it's their show and um, they sometimes know better than I do for sure. But uh, each song was a joy. And, uh, you know, it's great to sing with backup dancers, <laughs> like a ton of backup dancers and confetti and balloons and people on bikes. And oh, oh my God, it was nuts. It was nuts. I like seeing you rock out, though. I mean, is that in your wheelhouse? Because we know I, I know you do like a cabaret thing, but like how often do you get the chance to to really sing rock songs like that? Uh, not often. Um, and uh, uh, considering my elimination, maybe that's for the best. <laughs> well, Starfish was a great costume. What were your thoughts when you saw saw her and and what was it like performing inside of it? Um, Starfish is so adorable, but really hard to walk in. <laughs> Uh, and hard to raise my arms. So I, uh, I, it was just a challenge and I wanted to communicate with people. And I just felt like it was so adorable that I just felt like I needed to move all the time just cause I felt like a, you know, I just, it just felt so mercurial and the audience is so intense on that show. So any little movement, you can kind of get them excited. So um, yeah, I just was like feeling the love and going for it. Well, I could, you even jumped up and down a few times. So it must not have been that heavy. It wasn't. Well, it's just awkward. And I actually did face plant at one point, but it, was, <laughs> it wasn't on camera, uh, which I was kind of sorry for because maybe, maybe I would have gotten more votes if I fell on camera. I don't know. Little sob story. I don't know. It took like eight guys to pick me up. But that thing is like so foamy inside. So I was completely fine. It was like falling on a giant cloud without a light. You had some fun clues in your clue package and told this story about your two best gal pals making it big before her. Um, who were those gal pals and what is that story? Um, I was um, working in Chicago uh, as uh, doing improv and comedy. And I, I was doing a show with two friends of mine and um, there were a bunch of us that got a few of us that got, uh, we were considered for SNL. And um, so my two girlfriends got it and I didn't. Um, so we're like, we had the lunch with Lauren Michaels, the whole bit, um, came close. So, you know, it's just tough because you want to be happy for your friend, but then you have to sort of figure out what to do with your loss. And, you know, it was, it was tough. I mean, uh, it only took me 13 short years to get the office after that. So I had a lot of waiting tables, uh, between then and, and, uh, and, and the office. So yeah, it was, it was definitely a journey. Well, that was one of your other clues that I thought was interesting, the waiting tables. And you said you rubbed elbows with the likes of Steve Martin and Whitney Houston. Are those two celebrities who served? And do you have stories about that? What were they like to, to at the table? Um, I mean, Whitney Houston comes with a whole entourage. She was with Barbie Brown. So, um, yeah, that was like a whole like I mean, she is she was such a superstar. Like, oh, my God, like she such an icon. Um, so extremely like intimidating and wonderful you know um really nice but you know also just like oh my god please don't don't drop don't drop anything don't smell anything don't knock anything over on the great Whitney Houston uh and uh Steve Martin was in a meeting so he wasn't real chatty or anything but he was he was you know he was great I mean I'm, I'm a huge fan of his so I just try to keep it cool it's more about like me getting a headache from trying to act cool in front of like I even waited on you two one time Bono and the Edge and uh you know I just it's just like you just don't want to mess up their day you want to make sure you hear everything they say because now that I'm like a, a well-known person I find that sometimes if people are big office fans and I'm at a restaurant sometimes they if they don't write it down they don't remember what I said <laughs> so they get my order wrong a lot it's a champagne problem it's fine I get it and I've been on the other side of it are you super sympathetic now to servers totally Totally. Absolutely. Yeah. No, because I've so been, I used to wait on a lot of rich and famous people. So I get it, you know. Um, but also, you know, I just, uh, I'm, you know, I'm not, 
I'm not Britney Spears. It's like, calm down. It's only me. You know what I mean? I'm just saying, relax. You got this. We're good. You know? Well, you did make it big on The Office. It's such a beloved show. What was that experience like working with that incredible cast? And was it as fun as it looked? It was as fun as it looked. And I'll tell you um, how nice to do a show that really changed television comedy. I mean, there, the documentary style was not a TV thing. And I feel like there were things that were honed and created uh, during our show that had been used on other sitcoms. And uh, yeah, so it's it's always great to be a pioneer. It's also great to come up with a group of people where none of us are famous initially, and then suddenly everybody knows us. So, you know, I feel like in that way, we're, we'll always be bonded. And, and it, it, of course, keeps everybody more grounded. And of course, Steve Carell is the most grounded and the most amazing, you know, number one you ever want to have on a show. Just a really sweet, kind guy who cares more about the show than his ego just the real deal. So I it, I was so fortunate for a million, a million reasons. And I will say uh, as an actor, you know, we always like count lines and, uh, you know, everybody wants to show up and talk more, but I will say, I like learned to just relax. And if my line got cut, I sometimes would still get a laugh because they would cut to me. You know, it's just, it's a really interesting process for me and uh, trust in, in, uh, in comedy and just in like working with great directors, great writers and great actors. And a definition of ensemble. I mean, you you all won that SAG Award for Best Ensemble. You also won a Gold Derby Award, just FYI, for Best Ensemble um, for, for The Office. That had to be an incredible feeling to get that as a group. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's the thing. I mean, I'm one of seven kids. I feel like I was raised in an ensemble. Like, you figure out how to support each other without, you know, getting in the way or making it all about you. You know, it's like you, you figure out how to be of service um, you know, as best you can. I think that, you know, and also just like trusting in the process. Well, you and your friend Jane Lynch are co-hosting this year's Alzheimer's Association, Southern California Magic of Music Gala on May 9th. Talk about this event and, and how long have you been involved with the Alzheimer's Association? Uh, actually, this is my second uh, second year I'm hosting for them. Uh, last year, Jane couldn't do it, but uh, we're, we're Jane and I perform together every December because we did a Christmas album together called A Swing in Little Christmas. So it's really fun uh, to get to sing with Jane. We have a lot of chemistry on stage. We have a lot of fun and we have a great music director. So I feel like the music is interesting. It's not a hostage situation, but we're just here to raise awareness and, and some money so we can find a cure for Alzheimer's. My Aunt Rosemary, who was my godmother, one of the smartest women I know, she was a sports writer in the 50s. She was a, she was a lawyer and a mom in the 50s when no one was a lawyer and a mom in the 50s. And, you know, she, I watched her change and, uh, you know, and just her world got smaller and, and, you know, all of us with her, you know, we, that's the thing, Alzheimer's affects everyone in the family. And I feel like it's affecting more and more families and we have to figure out, we have to figure out a cure. We have to figure out prevention. We have to find out the mysteries behind this awful disease. Yeah. Even my family wasn't necessarily affected by Alzheimer's, but dementia. And I mean, and it it does seem like it affects everyone that I've known. If if you if if you have a grandparent or a relative that lives to a certain age, and God forbid it's even younger. I mean, we've seen people. Right. I know it does happen younger sometimes too. Yeah. I, it is. It's so mysterious, and I just feel like I, there have been a few breakthroughs, but it's just not happening fast enough. You know, I feel like all we have in this life is time and our families and the more time we can be with each other, um, the better. And we just wanna make that time great or simple. And um, you know, it's just really tough with a disease like Alzheimer's because uh, it's a, it's like they're, they're, this person is here, but they're not. And it's just, it's a really hard thing to negotiate in your heart and in your head. How did that friendship form with Jane and how did you guys come about recording an album together? The first time I ever went to Second City, Jane was understudying for somebody. And then a few years later, I became Jane's understudy. So it's all a small Chicago world. Uh, <laughs> and, um, you know, we, we performed together back in the in the late 80s, early 90s. And uh, about 10 years ago, well, right as the office was ending and Glee was ending, which is about the same time, Jane got asked to do a cabaret show. And Jane and I had sung it a few benefits, uh, you know, on and off for years. And so she asked me to join her and uh, we just, you know, created this cabaret act and suddenly we decided to do a Christmas album and now we have a Christmas show as well. 
So we've gotten to play the Kennedy Center and the Carlisle in New York and, you know, just some great places, the Lyric in, in Chicago, just amazing places, the Wallace in LA, um, to name a few. And, you know, it's just, it's just a labor of love. We have a great time. And um, I think the audiences are, um, you know, pleasantly surprised. They'll, they'll see a little bit of our TV personas, but uh, uh, we kind of take them on a little ride. It's fun. Is that something you're continuing to do? I, I mean, will there be more cabaret shows in the future? Be, yeah, we're, we go. Out, we'll we'll go out for another. Th I think three three and a half four weeks this December, like the end of like right when Thanksgiving ends, we'll be out until Christmas. Um, yeah, we've been doing that for years, and uh, every year it's a little bit different. If you go to janelynchofficial.com, you'll see our our dates coming up. Well, tickets and tables for the gala can be purchased, and I hope you raise a lot of money. Um, so many families are impacted. What what exactly will take place at this at the gala? What can people expect if they do attend? Well, there's uh, there we'll have some performances um, uh, besides Jane Lynch and I, uh, the Tony Guerrero band, and then um, I know that uh, Antonio, sorry, Antonia Bennett, who's uh, Tony Bennett's daughter, she's a, a jazz performer. She will be performing, and uh, there's a Broadway actress who's a singer and. Um, Sorry, I'm forgetting. And then um, one and one of the um, oh my gosh, I'm I think one of the Go Go's will be there. Yeah, wow. so it'll be it'll be fun. It'll be a fun show. Yeah, it'll it'll be great. And uh, forgive me for not um uh, uh, being on point, but I'm telling you, it's going to be a great night, no matter who shows up, because we promise a really fun evening. Um, and even though we're we're focusing on awareness and raising money, um, we will you know there's there's healing and laughter so you know laughter is the best medicine so we're here to we're here to help well anyone watching this video will include a link in the article i really appreciate that thank you so much and thank you for all your support during dancing with the stars i always felt like derby was like gold derby was really you know really lovely and supportive of me personally so oh I we're on it i mean you you had demarcus this other also another dancing with the stars alum this season what before i go what is it like seeing people from your group come out you had the the bachelor star an nfl hall of famer and then charlie wilson music legend right before you gets eliminated i know it's so weird i know but you know what it, uh, th these shows are so fun i mean i feel like anytime as an artist you get to stretch yourself and kind of go out of your comfort zone um you know we're in good company i, I think i think everybody should take a chance and also just give yourself another chapter and i just feel like if if you fall people will catch you there's so many so many fans and people just have such a devotion to these shows and it's it's really just an honor to be to participate yeah well okay it was so much fun to watch you perform as starfish on the mess singer thanks for sitting down and having a chat with gold derby today i appreciate it thank you guys thanks so much